Hey, Bo, what's the difference between instinct and impulse? So I find this a really challenging question, actually, to think about the difference between instinct and impulse. I found it really fascinating to think about that difference. And I'm going to answer this question here in New Orleans. I find myself in New Orleans. I got here late last night. I'm giving a keynote uh, this morning. I'm in what we call the green room, uh, ready to go on uh, in just a few minutes here to uh, one of the larger Latin management companies here in, in uh, Louisiana. Tomorrow I'm off to Seattle, then I'm going to New York, and then, and then Montreal for another keynote. So what's the difference uh, between instinct and impulse? Well, formally, impulse is a, is a drive to act. It's a desire. It's, it's, it's a happening. And instinct, you could argue, is, is kind of the, um, the feeling for how or why you acted. Uh, so you could, have a, you could have an impulse to run away, and an instinct as to the feeling of why you're running away. Uh, but what's really important is that they're both evolved uh, and they can also be learned. Um, and they're both perceptions. They're actions without thinking. Um, they're more about feeling. And, and I call it the voice. We have this voice that uh, we all know um, and experience. And a lot of us, I would argue, actually hide behind instinct and impulse or that voice. Um, as if they ha that instinct and impulse have some sort of intrinsic value uh, because they come sort of deep within us. We don't think you are just reacting. But the fact is, they don't. Just because they're done without thinking doesn't make them better, or in that sense, actually necessarily worse. Uh, they are reflexes, and as such, they can be very useful in their speed to respond. You're not thinking it's just an immediate. Uh, it, it could be the impulse to pull your hand away from a hot pan, uh, which of course is a good idea. It could be the instinct that burning your skin is a bad idea, and that's also, of course, um, a good idea, which you don't have to think about. But equally, things like um, our instincts and impulse can be very destructive. An uh, example is the impulse to go to Facebook or eat McDonald's. Um, both of them feed off our instincts and impulses, these evolved triggers, the impulse to consume sugar and high-carb, high-caloric uh, energy, because during evolution, when you came upon such a source, you needed to gobble it up as, as much and as fast as possible, or the instinct to be social. And yet neither Facebook or McDonald's really offer us anything in terms of the significance of those instincts and impulses, why they actually evolved in the first place. They don't, McDonald's doesn't offer us the nutrition. McDo uh, Facebook doesn't offer us this, what, what truly being social is. So they're actually imposters onto these things, but they, they feed off of those instincts and impulses that we're not thinking about. Habits and addictions can be impulses. Uh, and instincts change when in different contexts. So for instance, I'm really quite tired right now. So I'll have, I'll have different instincts and impulses um, having very little sleep than if I was really rested. So how can we know? I mean, the real trick is knowing which instincts and impulses to trust and which to look away from. And I pers have a personal rule, which is if the instinct or impulse adds value to others, then it's probably a good one. If it's only adding value to you, or even worse, uh, if it's being destructive to you and to others, or even um, then it's probably not a good instinct or impulse. To know yourself is to know your contextuality, is to know the context in which you have these impulses and instincts. Uh, and because many of our impulses and instincts are learned, uh, we, we don't think about them, so we think that they actually so they evolve, they're deep within us, but they can actually be learned. So for instance, many have the fear of intimacy, or the fear of surrendering to another person, or they have the instinct and impulse to dominate another person, or the impulse to lie and betray. These are also impulses, and they're instinctual, and they are learned. So if, if you could never learn to trust during your childhood, it's very likely that you now have an unconscious instinct to not trust people, and you'll justify that action with a post hoc narrative. Uh, but people so often don't want to challenge their impulses and instinct, uh, and whether they're actually willing to question those instincts and impulses and the sources of them. I think, I feel, I've always felt for quite a long time actually, that you can really tell a lot about a person according to their impulses and instincts, especially in times of conflict. It's really easy, of course, to be wonderful when everything's wonderful. Much more difficult to have instincts and impulses that are generous, are giving, are kind in times of stress, in times of conflict. 
but you can because we have a prefrontal cortex, right? We can activate that prefrontal cortex. That prefrontal cortex dampens those reflexes and enables you to look away for the obvious. This is why the lab, if you go onto the lab's website and you go to the store, we have a t-shirt that says, you know, activate your prefrontal cortex because that is our most recently evolved structure that enables us to look away from our instincts and impulses, especially those that were learned or even those that evolved that aren't serving us in a certain context. And the first step is to just stop. It's just to stop. And the next is to practice. Life is a practice. We can practice our instincts. We can practice our impulses uh, proactively. And eventually they become embedded into us and they become precognitive. They become unconscious in the future. So that's my take on the difference between instincts and impulses and also how we can use them and maybe even overcome them and create new ones. Thanks for listening.